Hello and welcome back to the channel. I'm Let's Play Potatoes. Today we're going to be reviewing a game that we had in Offs versus Bots. This game is actually something I'm going to dedicate to the understanding of how important it is to gather information, have the information, and know how to use it. Eventually, it, a lot of it we believe, and I think justly so, that a lot of the games fall down on how much information you have, the scouting that you have, and how you use it rather than the firepower. Now, in this specific setup, we have bots over sitting on the other opposite side with a lot, a lot of firepower. Two Stalingrads, a Henry, a Des Moines, and a Yamato. That means they have a lot of radar, they have a lot of long range, but they do not have constant scouting. Now, that can cause a little bit of an issue if you know how to use it against them. You need to be able to open water detect whatever it is that they have and you need to try and avoid them using their own gearing in order to detect whatever it is that we have. Therefore, getting a DD to the opposite side in order to detect whatever they have uh, and allowing that DD to survive is of paramount importance. Now, what's going to happen here is, is very simple. We know we have the advantage of detection and we know that they have a superior, extreme superior advantage in firepower. So how do we negate that firepower by basically preventing them from seeing us whenever it's possible and making sure that every time that they try and do something we will have a DD there to counteract that or at least allow us a reasonable amount of time for um, for reacting to whatever it is that they're doing. So early on, fairly straightforward push by us onto D and also into B. I am going to speed up a little bit. We don't need to see everything. We see that they have uh, two ships that are capping B simply because of the speed of the relative speed of how C is getting capped. We have an early, early uh, capping of D, so that gives us a little bit of an advantage. The Des Moines goes to his normal position where he sits behind the rock there. I do believe that we missed the opportunity to do some damage. We just weren't uh, in the mindset of putting it on, putting the guns in that direction. We sit in positions that allow us to detect what's coming. Now we do have two DDs and they have only one, but they do have a lot of radar. And between their three radar, we have only two main ships with radar plus the Yu Yangs. Now it is important to understand why we use Yu Yangs with radar and not smoke, because Yu Yang with radar allows it to be more of a scout. Unlike the gearing, which has 5.5 detection with the with the legendary and allows it to be a permanent scout that was slightly better, the, the Yu Yang has a permanent scout of being very low detection, not 5.5, but very low detection, but also the additional bonus of being a capture radar, a trap radar, meaning that if another DD gets within close enough of a range, the Yu Yang can radar it without being detected. Now, if you use that well, and if the Zhao's know what they're doing, or the Demon, or whoever is scouting with the with the DD, you're gonna be able to kill that other DD or do enough damage that the next time that DD is not gonna want to come back so easily, and he's not gonna be so ballsy in scouting, which means he's gonna be much more fearful fearful regarding how does he actually engage and how does he actually do things. So. Uh, what's going to happen is that you guys are going to be able to sit into a position that basically allows you to engage the enemy much easier. You're going to be able to do things that are much, much more safe than what would happen if you only had a single DD. Now, I want it while you're looking at this game to observe how we use your RPF. Now, almost ev almost every single ship in the game, with the exception of the Yamato and the Stongrad, have RPF. The Des Moines has RPF, the Zhao has RPF, the DDs have RPF, everybody. Why? Because between those RPF, the radio position finder, for all the ships, you should be able to discover things you didn't see before. You should be able to understand several things you didn't see, several things that you didn't know, with, with the looking. Now it doesn't tell you a guaranteed anything but it does allow you to assume several factors regarding what's going on in the game and that can be uh, something that will either win or lose a match. I want to also explain something very very simple. We see this quite often in replays from other clans and in, uh, in games with other places. I always tell the, the members of, the, of Clan Wars that never mind what, never mind what, always assume the worst if you are a Zhao and you're thinking do I want to do a, I want to 
put myself in a broadside situation yes no always assume can I do it safely if there was a Yamato there or if the stun guard is exactly in the worst position I can imagine and then follow up on that and if you believe that those things are basically if you say okay it, there's no way that ship is there or this ship is here and then all of a sudden he is, you're going to get deleted. You're going to lose all your HP. Then you're passing on one of the three Holy Trinities, which is keeping your HP first, kills after, and then caps. Now, the idea is very simple. You need to constantly, constantly think about the worst case scenario. If you think about the worst case scenario, you're never going to be surprised. Or you're going to be surprised uh, in a not, not very often, which is what you want to try and maintain. And if you're going to think like that, is the Zaos, the Yamatos and the Zaos, and the Des Moines and the Stalingrads and everyone, what big ship you're in, you're going to be able to use your other ships much more efficiently. For example, as you can see right now, the Zao and the Yuyang are on the opposite side. Uh, we know where they are. We know that we where six of their ships are. We know there's a Henry, we know that there's another ship sitting in A somewhere because there's an RPF that doesn't sit exactly with A between the Yu Yangs, the Zhao, and the Des Moines. We know that the RPF doesn't sit exactly on the Henry, therefore there's another ship there. We know where the Des Moines is because we've seen the last position of them. We know the Yamato is. We know where the Stalingrad and the Henry are. So we can assume more or less what's going on and we can assume where most of the ships are. We're still missing one. So what the Yu Yang does, the Yu Yang on the opposite side, the Yu Yang in the C area, He's slowly pushing into sea, and he's slowly going upwards in order to try and find out what is going on. He, if, if he manages to detect the Henry, if he manages to detect what's going on in uh, in in sea, uh, the guard, the Yamato, the sign, the Henry, make sure that there's nothing else. <coughs> he's gonna be able to cap sea, but not only that, he's also gonna be able to put the Zhao in a position that will allow him to shoot on the Henry and the Stalingrad without being detected or keeping his range while being detected and putting proper shots into the Henry and the Stalingrad. Now the Henry and the Star B are very very fearful of torpedoes and justly so. So what they're doing is they're rushing backwards in order to try and avoid the the Yu Yang. Obviously the Yu Yang doesn't have non-stop tours but between the Yu Yang and the Zhao and the lack of the Stalingrad of running forward and his HP being fairly low he decides to move backwards which basically causes him to lose the cap. Now again once this happens, once I see the Henry and the Stalingrad are running backwards, I basically head on back to try and support our members on this side. Between a Yamato, a Des Moines, a Yu Yang, and a Zhao, I just don't know if they can manage the five ships. There we go. The five ships are on that side. Now, this, now we have all the members of their team de detected. One, our Yu Yang on the opposite side is basically supporting the Zhao by keeping the DD away from the Zhao, he is very low HP, he's very, very low HP, but he should be able to detect him fairly long enough for us to help uh, the opposite side. The Yamato goes into the cap in order to keep their caps, their leading in points. This was a, a, something that shouldn't have happened. They were basically, in all honesty, was a, a kind of a useless move. They have a Des Moines, they have a Yamato. The one thing the Yamato should have done was gone over to see, maybe support them a little bit, but I guess between the Yu Yang, the Zhao, and myself and the Stalingrad, they decided it was too much of a risk and they decided to push in. They wanted to try and take down the Des Moines. Surprise, surprise, they didn't know where I was. They thought I was continuously pushing up with the Zhao, because Andy does plenty of damage when he's trying. They Maybe they thought he would, they were being shot by two people. And then, surprise, a Stalingrad comes on your side, the lack of information basically affecting them heavily. I try uh, basically facing off to the Yamato, uh, there's going to be a Des Moines that's going to come to my side, but I aim my guns towards the sea uh, cap, noticing the Stalingrad and the Henry are pushing in, trying to support a little bit on that side, see if I can do some extra damage. The Des Moines decides to reverse us a little bit to try and get me. He shows a little bit too much broadside and I do not take too much of an advantage of it. Just a, lo a little bit over uh, 11k damage. I take a lot of damage in return, but they have to, uh, the Des Moines has to run away. I am currently detected obviously by the Yamato plane and the Star over there. So there is an element of risk in everything that you do, but because we know where they are and because we know that we need the caps, I do go up, end up uh, doing something that I normally wouldn't do and uh, sit in the cap in front of a Yamato. 
I in retrospect this is something that was maybe a mistake on my count I should have reversed and should have stayed a little safer until we would have known exactly what was going on in A and it does end up uh, losing losing the uh, yeah, losing the Stongra basically me dying off now uh, thankfully the Yamato dies soon after on the enemy team he dies to the Moines and the Yamato which means that and also on top on the um, on the C cap the Henry dies off in between a Yu Yang and Andy and a Zhao, they should be able to handle with that song. He's not going to be able to get back in the cap. Now, at this point, again, they are lacking in detection. We have one gearing down the south versus a Zhao that's full HP, one Yu Yang, low HP. They have a Henry and a Stalingrad in a Des Moines sitting on the opposite side, and they're going to have to deal with a Yamato. Now, there's no way a Des Moines can deal with a Yamato going in. They need to bring that Stalingrad closer. They need to get the gearing further into B. But overall, between the fact that the Stalingrad is up there alone versus a Yuyang that's detecting now it's tough, Andy using the islands and the detection of the Yuyang in order to keep the Stalingrad spotted, he's going to end up killing that Stalingrad. And what they are forced to do is push. They're forced to push into the unknown because they currently don't have enough to know what's going on. Now, as you can see, basically at this point, the game is almost lost. There are a few options. They can still do plenty of damage. They can kill Max over there in a Zhao because uh, the Gearing still have superior detectability over uh, Red Xi and the Yu Yang with his uh, legendary. But because Max and Red are reversing back to safety, they're basically going to continuously keep the DD running after them and should allow them to run away. The Stalingrad should have helped, the Stalingrad should have dealt with the Zhao, but between the Stalingrad noticing that there's a Yamato in front of him and the fact that the Yu Yang is spotting the Henry, they're going to be able to do plenty of damage. There we go. Cholton eventually takes down uh, the Stalingrad up in the north. The Henry has to turn back. Max notices that the Des Moines over there is running after him, as well as Red. They know that they're, the Des Moines is coming up. They leave B. Un basically, with all the everything that was going on, they thought that maybe the Stalingrad was going to be able to deal with the Yamato solo. He doesn't. There's uh, no ramming that happens here. The Stalingrad tries to get the side. He, they don't know that the DD is in B. And then what happens is that basically the Stalingrad doesn't manage to put enough damage into the Yamato because of the third rotation. He probably has the reload module. Cholton gets closer to the to the Stalingrad, puts just enough torps on his side to leave him with low HP and just enough to help Cholton finish him off. There we go, Dian finishes him off, alright. At this point, they are struggling and they know it. Uh, Ariyamato is on the opposite side, so he can't really help on the Des Moines. Max is very, very low HP. He turns back for some reason. I don't know exactly why he's turning back. He shouldn't have. Uh, that is a very risky maneuver, and he ends up paying for it. However, on the opposite side, we have Andy with very, very, uh, very high HP compared to um, the enemy Des Moines. And we do have Ian in a Yamato and basically what happens is that the Des Moines ends up being stuck between all of these ships the Henry has no detectability on the Yang and he knows that torpedoes are coming he ends up uh, having to dodge every single second thinking what's gonna happen up ahead which puts him in threat of getting, showing Citadel to a Yamato or a Zhao they have to push in they're about to lose the game and this is basically the difference now I'm gonna slow down a little bit so let just to repeat, just to repeat what's going on. If you know what's going on on the map, you're going to be able to use the advantage of the information. You need to know as much as possible whenever, all the time. And if you do know, you're going to be able to use the advantage of having less firepower, but more scouting and more information to your advantage, and you're going to be able to do so much more. Like, for example, when Andy uses the Yu Yang in order to sit behind an island and shoot at a Stalingrad and a Henry, he ends up almost solo killing both of them. 
with a little bit of support from Cholton later on. Because that Stonger didn't know where the DD was, he maybe thought he was too far away, he ended up running into a BB. Instead of ramming it and maybe changing the course of this game, he ends up dying without gaining a single kill. <coughs> The Des Moines and the Henry, once they lost the gearing, had no way of detecting the Yu Yang and basically ended up losing the game uh, with us having a lot of very low HP ships. So, information is crucial and you can use the lack of firepower, uh, but the superior information and scouting in your advantage. Remember, RPF allows you to see things at a guesstimate. It doesn't tell you exactly where things are. It tells you more or less what's there. It doesn't tell you how many. So you need to remember to constantly think, what am I going to do? What's coming? And how do I use the information that I have? What do I do with it? I am Let's Play Potatoes. I, go, I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, and please, if you liked it, put a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, put a thumbs up and leave a comment. Tell me why you didn't like it. I hope this helps out other clans and other people in the future to uh, maybe get better clan wars, maybe get better games. If you want to ask a question, if you want to come see me, look me up. Uh, Let's Play Potatoes on Twitch with Let's Play Potatoes without the E. And I will see you again next time.